By default, Swift lets us access the properties and methods inside our structs freely. But sometimes this is not what you want. Sometimes you want to add some logic around your properties inside a method to control the way properties are changed. Or you might know that certain methods must be called in the exact order or in exact way and therefore want to restrict them from being called by other people. Now we can demonstrate the problem with some simple code. If we have a struct called bank account with a variable property called funds equal to zero, we could say there's a deposit method which takes an amount integer and adds to the funds. There's also a withdraw method that checks if they have the funds to withdraw and if so, returns true and subtracts the amount and then otherwise returns false. So it has controls in place for how we withdraw money. And really it should be used like this. Bar account equals a new bank account, account deposit amount 100, and then attempt to withdraw amount 200. If it works, print a message, otherwise print a different message. But here in our struct, the funds property is exposed to us externally. So what's stopping us from touching it directly? The answer is nothing at all. This kind of code is perfectly allowed. Account.funds minus equals a thousand. So taking out way more money than we have in place. It completely bypasses the logic we had that verifies they have the funds before withdrawing anything. And now our program can behave in all sorts of weird ways. To solve this, we can tell Swift that our funds property should be available for reading and writing only inside the struct by methods that belong to it, like deposit and withdraw, as well as any computed properties, property observers, and so on. It takes only one extra keyword, which is this, private. We've made funds private. And now trying to read funds from outside the struct is no longer possible, but it is possible inside deposit and withdraw. If you try to modify funds from outside the struct, Swift will refuse to even build your code. This is called access control because it controls how a struct's properties and methods can be accessed from outside the struct. Now Swift gives us several options. When you're learning though, you only need a handful here. First up, you want to use private for places where nothing outside the struct should be allowed to use a property or method. Use file private for the same thing but outside the current file. So two pieces of code in the same file with file private can read the data correctly. And thirdly, use public for anyone, anywhere can use this. Those are the three main ones, but there is one extra one that's sometimes useful for learners, which is this, private set. You'll use it occasionally while you're learning and use it a lot when you're writing production code. It means let anyone read this property, externally or internally, it's all fine, but only let my internal methods write it. So if we'd use that with bank account, it would mean that we could uh, print out our funds amount externally from the struct, but we couldn't modify it. We couldn't do anything other than call deposit or withdraw, which makes sense. In fact, in this case, I think private set is actually the best choice. You can read the current bank funds all you want to, but you can't change it without running my custom logic. Now, if you think about it, access control is really about limiting what you and other developers can do. And honestly, it makes sense. You know, when you go to your code and say, actually, uh, this thing, I want to make sure it's private set, you have stopped yourself from making mistakes. Swift will enforce that you do not attempt to write funds from outside. And if you can make Swift stop us from making mistakes, that's always a smart move. Now I'll give you an important tip here. If you have a uh, private access control value property inside your struct, there's a good chance you have to create your own initializer.